Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. We are in chapter 2 and uh, continuing with the topic 2.1 Automotive Spice and as a part of it we have covered the part 1 which discusses about the design and structure of these standards but in this tutorial we will be continuing ahead as we have one more topic to cover as a part of design and structure of these standards. The topic today which we'll be covering is all about the capability levels in the capability dimensions. Now capability levels comes from the same orientation which you know from your basic understanding of uh, the capability maturity model like CMMI, TMMI, CTP Next. So similarly, we do have a specific to automobile industry, a capability level uh, model, which helps you to understand the different capability dimensions of an automobile industry. So generally, it happens to be that here, the only slight difference is we start from zero as level zero will be the first one and moving to the four and five. So the fifth one will be the last level and each level again similarly just like CMMI and TMMI stands for a unique method. So to begin with the very first thing which we have to understand is level zero which is incomplete process. Incomplete process just like our initial one from the CMMI that you do not have anything predefined. You don't have any process at all. So probably you're, you're just uh, this is just a process which does not exist or do not have achieved uh, the pro purpose of the process sometime. So cannot even achieve that what exactly your target and goal is. For example, the tester only checks a minor part of the requirement. So it, it does happen in automobile industry that it, it is considered as a safety critical system. And when you say incomplete process, that means uh, what kind of part it is that or what kind of process it is that you don't have anything predefined or anything which does not exist in terms of planning or process orientation or defining the activities as a part of the development and testing process. So yes, here it happens to be a very small component, maybe may, maybe making sure that they're making the gasket or marking, talking about the body of the casing or the very, very small part of a particular requirement. Thus, you probably don't need a process for that. So if you're building such small components of the automobile industry and you are not into something complex which requires a process, you will be accredited with the level zero, which is incomplete process. Level one is standing for the performed process, that you have done something, but it's not up to the mark. So generally we say that the implemented process achieved this process purpose, but uh, may be executed inconsistently. That means you don't follow those standards every time. So every time you work with a particular part, probably next time you get another set of part. So when you talk about the mechanical industries, we talk about the uh, milling industries, we generally create different parts, different time. So they don't have an exact process. They have a process, but different for different projects. So yes, that is how it varies from people to people. So it, it all depends on what kind of part you get. You have something which is already performed, but not the same for every time you get a project. So example says, there is no complete planning visible for the test process. However, the tester can show the level of fulfillment of the requirement. So the fulfillment can also be achieved here that whatever you want to do, you have done that. Well, the level two is about managed process. The project plans and supervises the process in its execution. Under certain circumstances, it adapts the course of action during execution to meet the objective. The requirements for the work products are defined. A project member checks the work product and approves them. So this is more of a kind of managed where people are taking care of it. You have different set of people in order to make sure that the quality is there in the process. People are following that. So you can recall the learning from the QA and QC concepts. QA generally defines the process. QC makes sure that you follow that and the same way. So here also we do have a process and plan which is defined in order to achieve a target. And at the same time, the team will make sure that we have a verification step or measurable matrices, which will make sure that we are oriented towards the plan. And yes, it is well managed. As an example, the test manager defines the test objective, plans the test activities and supervises the process. In case of deviations, he reacts accordingly. So we know about the control actions from the foundation. So yes, everything follows according to that. And that's level two, which is well-managed process. 
But as level three established process, the project uses a standardized process and findings are used to constantly improve. So yes, it, it's just like, you know, uh, it's uh, defined or I can say quantitatively managed that you have got a standard process with you. And every time you perform that, you conduct a retro at the end of the process and you find or gather your lessons learned in order to improvise your process further or, you know, put it uh, a better enhancement in order to make sure that you're prevent your mistakes to happen. So that's what we call it as level three established process. As of now, when you talk about the automotive industries, the capability level four and five are not in the focus of automotive industry. So this is basically from the product point of view. When any organization deal with product implementations or product creation, uh, they have these kind of uh, cap capability levels to be followed. But for automotive industry, as per the syllabus, it says that the level four and level five are currently uh, not in the, in the scope of the automotive industry, but for your learning, because I don't want to leave you incomplete at this point. So let me just show you what exactly the four and five are. But please consider that this is out of syllabus. Number four, predictable. The process operates within defined limits to achieve its process outcomes. That means we follow certain targets in terms of like measurements, control, and making sure that everything is uh, to the point and meeting the deadlines very strictly. And we have very tight schedules in order to make sure that this is uh, the number of days of the cycle which should be delivering this, then we do deliver the same thing. So yes, we do have some of the attributes, process attributes, which we generally target as a part of level four is the process measurement and process control as well. Last but not the least, the final level is the five, which is optimizing. The process is continuously improved to meet the current and uh, projected business goals, which is like beyond. We say that you are done with everything, what you want to do. Now you're contributing further to make a new creation or updating something which might not be generally practiced in all other organizations. And we have process attributes as process innovation and process optimization, which could turn into a good creativity and add more value to your product quality. So yes, we can also look further to the process attributes of different levels as well. As zero does not have anything, so level zero doesn't have a process attribute at all. Uh, level one has process attributes of process performance, no matter whatever you're using, but the output must be efficient. And level two makes use of performance management and the work product management, like creations of various artifacts and assets which you generate as a part of the test process must be well managed. Whereas the level three makes use of process definitions and process deployment throughout the organization and making sure that we are following that strictly. So that was all I wanted to share with you from the point of capability levels in the capability dimensions. We will be getting back to you with another tutorial with the next segment of this chapter. So stay tuned for that. Should you have anything else team, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.